Well, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, December 23rd. Tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I hope you plan to be part of one of our seven Christmas Eve services at E-Free. Let me go through them again. Here at our Gaylor campus, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock. The 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock service will be broadcast live online. And then the Sault Ste. Marie campus, 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Five opportunities. I hope you'll be part of one. And I hope between now and Christmas Eve, you will invite three other people to be part as well. Well, we're walking through the Christmas story and we've reached the wise men. Now, if you know me, if you've been around, you know that one of my theological pet peeves is when we see the wise men at the manger because they did not come to the manger. The wise men showed up after the birth of Jesus. Now, I want to show you this morning why that's the case. Let me read Matthew 2, 1 through 2. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who's been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Now, let's talk for a little bit about this question. When did these events occur? Well, it says in that text, it was after Jesus was born. You say, well, he still could have been in the manger, right? Well, not if you look at the rest of Scripture. You see, according to Matthew 2 and verse 11, when the wise men show up, Mary and Joseph and the child are in a house. They're no longer in the cave. They're no longer having Jesus in a manger. There's now room in a house for them. This is after the manger. I also believe it's pretty clear that this visit was after Jesus was dedicated in the temple. We saw that the last couple of weeks. That's when he met Simeon. That's when he met Anna. Now, how do I know it was after? Well, keep in mind, according to the law, you circumcised a male child on the eighth day and then the mother was unclean for 40 days if it was a male child. And when the 40 days came to an end, they would bring the child to the temple to make a sacrifice. That's what Mary and Joseph were doing when they met Anna, when they met Simeon. Jesus was 40 days old at that point. Now, what do they offer? Well, we already saw this, didn't we? They did not offer lambs. You know why? They couldn't afford the lamb. Instead, they offered two birds, and the law allowed for that. The law allowed for those who were poor and could not afford lambs to offer turtle doves or pigeons, and that's what Joseph does. Now, what does that tell me about the wise men? It tells me they hadn't shown up yet. Why? Well, what did the wise men bring? Uh, they brought gold. They brought frankincense, they brought myrrh, very wealthy gifts. Now, let me ask you a question. If Joseph had the gold, the myrrh, and the frankincense, would he have been able to afford lambs? Absolutely. So again, shows me the wise men had not been there yet. By the way, remember Matthew 2, 16, Herod's order was to kill boys up to age two. So this puts the timing of the wise men's visit at minimum, 40 days after the birth of Jesus, up to two years after the birth of Jesus, the wise men were not at the manger. Why is that important? Well, because we should always want to be biblically correct. Now, who were the wise men? Did they play an important, they played an important role. In fact, we're gonna spend four more check-ins talking about them. That's how important their role is, but they weren't at the manger. Well, if you want to kind of freak some of your Facebook friends out, share this video on their page. Tell them to take the wise men away from their nativity scenes. And we'll talk more about the wise men tomorrow. Don't miss it. Have a good day.